Oh, gosh. <laughs> My project bag is a mess. <laughs> does it does it contain secrets? Secrets? <laughs> <laughs> My project bags always contain secrets, but they're very different from, from the kind that we were talking about before. <laughs> Hello, makers. Welcome to the Making Conversation podcast, where we chat all about making, the app and the act. I'm Jen, head of marketing here at Making. My pronouns are she, her, and my Making app username is Knit Pearl. Y'all, Marina is back. Yay. And we love when you come chat with us on the podcast, Marina. So thank you for joining us. Oh, well, thanks for having me. I always love being here. I think we have some new listeners. So do you want to introduce yourself to everybody so that, you know, they can get to know the amazing you in case they don't? <laughs> My name is Marina and my pronouns are she, her. My username on the making app is Heartbun Knits and I am a knitter and have been for well now well over 20 years. I enjoy all things making. I'm trying to learn how to crochet. So that's like my, my thing right now. I, it's hard for me because there's a lot of counting involved and I like to just like be doing something else, but that's like my new thing. I'm trying to learn how to crochet. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Are you like watching YouTube videos or is there a specific like book or? So my kid is like really into like when we go to like festivals around our area, they're always selling like crocheted bees. And so I'm trying to learn how to make a bee. And my first one came out actually okay. My second one came out kind of okay, but I am more of a... um like I, if, if I can read the directions, like if I'm watching something, it's too, it's usually way too fast or I can't see what they're doing or yeah. they hold the yarn differently than I do. And I'm like, I can't, it's hard for me to figure out. So I have been, um, I just like downloaded a pattern and have been trying to like figure it out from there. And I've done pretty well, but it's a lot of like paying attention and I like to do it mindlessly. So that's a little bit of a change for me. Yeah. I feel like that is, well, it's like, Anytime you start a new craft, right? It's not going to be a mindless situation. <laughs> You'll get there. It's You'll totally get there. Cool. One day we're going to check back in and you're going to just show me a basket full of bees and be like, I did this while watching a movie. <laughs> right. Yes. One of these days. One of these days. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting close. Do you follow Drew, Drewby Zoo on TikTok or Instagram at all? I don't know. I guess I'm going to have okay. to. Yeah, that's a that's a must follow for any fiber artist. Um, we adore Drew and uh, he makes lots of bees. And oh, nice. um, okay. you might have seen he's used. Remember that gal on TikTok that like save the bees gal? Yes. Yes. Today is a great day to save the bees. Bees had been living in this washing machine and I was called to remove them. So I carefully lifted the lid. And I found a beautiful hive full of honey and very gentle bees. When I looked inside, I saw layer after layer of fresh honeycomb. The bees had worked so hard to build this hive, and I wanted to do everything I could to preserve it for them. He would use her sound, so like her talking about saving the bees, and with his crocheted bees. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> and recreate okay. the videos. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you might have to scroll back a bit because I know he's pretty active on TikTok, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Um, well, congratulations on learning a new craft. That's awesome. I you know, learned how to crochet and have not done enough of it there. I do enjoy crocheting and I love the look of it. So maybe, maybe this is my sign that I need to add a, my crochet project into my queue. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you have yeah. it. Just one. It's <laughs> just one. <laughs> I love it. I know. I think, I do think it is that thing about like, Oh, I, I won't be able to just like sit and like watch TV or movie or chat with a friend or something like that. Like it's going to have to be something where I think. Yes. Yeah. For me, it like hurts my hand in like a different way because I'm like holding the like the crochet hook and the yarn in a different way than I'm used to. And yeah. so like my hand ends up like hurting pretty quickly. And I think also because I probably have a really tight grip because I don't know what I'm doing. And so I have to like just yeah. be like a little bit more relaxed. And so I I'll get there <laughs> yeah. one of these well, days. But you're gonna have to go back to the podcast episode 
before this one with Mariah, who taught us some stretching and strengthening. Yes. For I when do we need are that. Yeah. Yes. And I'm all for that. She's a physical therapist. I, I'm an occupational therapist. So I like, I, I feel an attachment, even though I don't know her in real life. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So y'all, this one is going to be fun. Now I do want to acknowledge that uh, we do state that we are a podcast that celebrates making in all forms. And I, I, I know that we've been talking a lot about fiber arts lately. So um, we will be mixing it up very soon. <laughs> but I ran across a TikTok on this topic that we're going to be talking about today. And I knew that we had to eventually dive into it here. So I like saved it for like the best moment. And of course, having Marina on is the best moment. We're going to be talking about spies in history that use knitting uh, stitches, their notions, needles to communicate special messages during wartime. We need like special spy music now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'll add that in. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> spy music. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, because of the number of knitters that were like around, like in that time, I mean, I feel like there's so many knitters now too, but. I don't know. I kept reading because of how many people would like knit. It was really common. They were like recruited to use fiber art in this way. And I was like, hmm, this is this is very interesting. So um, in the book, Writing Secret Codes and Sending Hidden Messages, Giles Dubeni. I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Giles. Oh, uh, Brand Red. That's a that's a name. I'm very sorry, Giles. I definitely messed that up. And Peter Stevenson note that after Morse code was invented, it was soon realized that string or yarn suited well. And an ordinary loop knot can make the equivalent of a dot. And a knot in the figure eight manner will give you the equivalent of a dash. So that was, um, you know, there was a lot of like different information around that kind of stuff when I was doing my research. But mm -hmm. Just to give you a little bit of background on, um, you know, why they would use knitters. That's a really good example right there. So we both did a little bit of research on uh, different spies and such. So let's jump into that in a second. But first, uh, let's talk about what we found in the making app this week that was cool. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I put my glasses on because I can't really see you without them. I am right here. I, <laughs> I got you. I understand. It's either glasses but, or contacts. So, so I actually, because I am like a lover of stripes, like all things stripes, I found Alicanta knits and she did uh, the traveling light cardigan. I love cardigans because I'm just not like a pullover sweater type of person. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm actually currently making a cardigan. And so I got all excited about it. Um, and it's beautiful. It looks like it's black and white stripes. Um, and it's just a gorgeous cardigan. And she doesn't know the name of the um, yarns because she just used some yarn from her stash. Um, but nice. it's a beautiful cardigan. And I was like, ooh, that is like my jam. So I'm going to go and see if I can find the pattern and uh, see what I can make out of it. Because it looks also like, I think in her comments, she said she made some adaptations to it. So mm. I have to kind of read the pattern and see what's going on there. I just started getting into that, even though I've been knitting for so long, it's like hard for me to like make adjustments from the actual pattern. But she's definitely inspired me because I love all things stripes and it just came out beautiful. It's like a gorgeous cardigan. I definitely am somebody who just is like, I will follow instructions and mm -hmm. like yeah. thinking outside of what those instructions are. Like, I mean, I'm not good. I'm not a math person, but no, <laughs> that's probably either. why I cannot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm really inspired. I'm inspired to try. It. I'm a little nervous with stripes and sleeves because I feel like you ha everything has to match up or if you... You know, like I'm one of those people, if I make a mistake, I don't go back and fix it. I just kind of keep going. And you can't do that with stripes because if you have one stripe too many on one side or whatever it is, it's going to make your other sleeve look off. So I'm a little nervous about the sleeves, but it's too pretty to pass up. So, yeah. And I feel like 
I feel like this could be a really good moment of like letting go the feeling of being terrified to frog. Like yes. you might have to just do that with a sleeve. And then of yeah. course sleep island and so everything takes longer. But I feel like there's so many times where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to embrace this. But that would be like a good lesson in like patience and maybe it's okay to frog. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it would be. I, I, I'm working on it. Like I usually, it, I can frog like an entire piece that I've done, but it's hard for me to, like if I've made a mistake in the middle, I usually just want to keep going. So I got to work on that. Like I can pull apart a whole sweater, like no one's business. But if I've made a mistake somewhere in the middle of the sweater, I'm like, oh, I'll just keep going. But with stripes, mm -hmm. you can't do that because it's an obvious mistake. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Godspeed. I, I believe in you. Marina, you've got this. <laughs> and I'm excited to see updates on that because that does sound fun. So first of all, just a shout out in general to this maker, Youngman Lee. We love you oh, so yes. much. Youngman posted a photo of a Bojagi quilt. And it says, if you are I in the St. Louis, Missouri area, please come and visit the St. Louis Art Museum and participate in our community Bojagi project how cool is that i know she does Love some amazing it. stuff yeah she's on the making app at youngman lee bojagi and just love her. She's been in the making orbit for a very long time. And we we love Youngman. She's definitely a follow on the making app and elsewhere too. She has like a whole travel thing where you can sign up and go with her to different places. And her posts are always so cool. Like I always love seeing what she's like creating and making. So if y'all want to have your minds blown, open up the making app and go to Dimensional Weaving, their profile. Martina makes the most amazing 3D weavings, felting, all of that. And there is, I know we've talked about her stuff before, but she made a charcuterie board. <gasps> yes, I saw that. I was just about to ask. If, I was like, is it the one that made the charcuterie board? That's so cool. She's How so fun. like a couple of days ago or like yesterday, she posted a photo of her holding these saltine crackers. Yes. And yes. I was like, somebody made saltine crackers. That's cool. Oh my God, that's Felton. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes along with the whole charcuterie board, no less. Mind blown every time. And it's just like, yep. you look at this and you're like, this is all felted. It's freaking it's magical. Felix Aguilar, that oh, is their yeah. username. They had a cute little, a little vest. Um, yeah. Or socks. I think it's a vest that you're talking about. Yeah. This is, it was just really cute. It looked comfy and fun. How cute is that? Yeah. Adorable, right? I love stuff like that. It's, it's mm -hmm. always like cute and fun. And I think, you know, like what a cool gift to give like a child. I mean, you know, children probably don't necessarily care, but I think like to get, do something that's like handmade that way for like mm -hmm. a family member. They're another wonderful maker that is uh, posting a lot in, in the app and very, very, very talented. Also a very fast knitter. Like <laughs> I wish, I wish I was faster and had more time. <laughs> I know. Right. Both of those things. Okay. So I feel like it's time to get into why we're here. Let's talk about these knitting spies. Which are really, really fascinating. I think just it's like amazing that, you know, I, I think that they were so good at being spies because who would think that a knitter was like a spy, right? Like out of all the people that you would like label spies, knitters are not would not have been at the top of my list. One of the ladies that I looked at, her name was Molly Rinker. And she was also known as Ma Rinker. And she was the spy who knitted socks. Like that's like the perfect, I think, uh, intro to a movie, right? The spy who knitted socks. And she was an American revolutionary spy, which I think is really cool. And she used to pass secrets on to like George Washington um, and his army. And so the way that she would do that is that she was an innkeeper in Philadelphia and at the time, General Washington, because it was the American Revolution, he wasn't president yet, she would hear things in her inn, and she was like an inn slash tavern. So 
the British were staying there because often, you know, you had to take in British soldiers at the time. And so they were staying there and she would listen to their conversations and then she would pass those conversations on to George Washington and um, his army. And so what she would do is she would go out after she heard something, she would take her knitting and she would go outside and she would sit on top of this like really big rock. Um, and that would be the cue to the soldiers to come and gather up the information. So she would write the information down on scraps of paper and then hide them in like little balls of yarn. When the soldiers would come by, she would drop the ball of yarn and one of the soldiers would pick it up. And then she would go back inside and you know, finish her job, which was just casually you know, dropping a ball of yarn and leaving it right. there. <laughs> right. you know, like she's like knitting socks. She's like, oops, I dropped that soldier would come by, pick it up and it would have the, the message in it. And then she'd go back and finish serving the British soldiers and listen to what other information they gave. And so she would just keep doing that. Um, I think it was only for like a short period of time. I think it was only like six or eight weeks or something like that, but that she was really helpful in providing information to uh, George Washington and his army. Okay, so one. So you said that there's it, it was an inn and tavern? Yes. Okay, so she basically was like, here's some here's some truth serum, a.k.a. alcohol. <laughs> right, right. She would get all the information from him. Oh, my God, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Okay, and then two, like, obviously, she was not knitting with, like, $30 a skein hand-dyed yarn. <laughs> She's just like <laughs> casually dropping it and walking away. Right, right, right. No, I think that this was probably much cheaper. I would hope it was much cheaper yarn. Yeah. <laughs> she, it was an it, like her going out to sit on the rock and knit the socks was like a good, like it was a good way to get the soldiers to notice her and know that she was trying to pass something on. Um, and they say she was a little bit disgruntled about having um, the British soldiers in her inn in tavern because at, at that again at that time you had to take in the soldiers and so this was like kind of her way of like getting back at that and and giving them some I don't know what would you call that it wouldn't be beer ale probably ale at ale, the time yeah, yeah. and the, the ale loosened some lips and she got some secrets Oh, I love it. One of the spies that I researched did not have a name anywhere. And I'm sure that there are so many people who like helped in these efforts yes. that their stories are just lost to time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so women or people of color, I'm sure their stories are lost. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That was, yeah, that's, I, I was thinking about that and I was like trying to see if I could find any people of color, women of color who were part of this. And um, unfortunately, uh, it was hard to find anything. Do some spies, though, not want to be known ever? I feel like that's also a thing. Well, yeah, because I mean, you could get in a lot of trouble, right? Like, I feel like I would yeah. be worried about, you know, Molly Rinker getting caught or, you know, getting found out. We'll just know that there were heroes that were not, you know, not named. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So during World War I in German-occupied Belgium, there was a woman who would knit at her window and would change her stitch based on the train passing. So from the article, the wartime spies who used knitting as an espionage tool by Natalie Zarelli, as one train chugged by, she made a bumpy stitch in the fabric with her two needles. Another passed, and she dropped a stitch from the fabric. Does that person know how to knit? <laughs> <laughs> Making an intentional hole. So I'm going to guess it was a yarn over and not a drop stitch. <laughs> I wanna, now I have to do more research into this. Did she do it? I feel like a drop stitch. That's like a long hole. <laughs> Yeah, yes, eventually. Sure. I'm going to guess that Natalie maybe does not knit. Uh, so I, I don't know. I'm sorry, Natalie, if you're watching this and you do knit, I'm very sorry. But I would think <laughs> that you would say that she did a yarn over and you wouldn't say she dropped a stitch from the fabric. Anyways, this woman would sit and watch the train and then would make a bumpy stitch, which I'm trying to figure out, what, would that just be a pearl? Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Later, she would risk her life by handing the fabric to a soldier, a fellow spy in the Belgian resistance, working to defeat the occupying German force. Wow. 
I know. And again, I couldn't find her name. So if anybody ends up finding her name, we will we'll make sure to put it in the show notes. But can you imagine just like, I don't no, know. because I'd be like, worried you get caught, right? Yeah. Or like, I mean, I guess you could just be like, hey, I, you know, I was just knitting. I mean, how would how would you really technically get caught? Because I guess people wouldn't really know what you were doing. I guess it would be more of the act of like handing it over to the soldier. And also, did she like, I want to know, was it scarves that she made? Was it like yes. sweaters? Like, here, soldier, you look cold. Right. <laughs> I think it was a good way to get away with things, right? Because that was also yeah. really popular, like, uh, during war times was to, like, knit for soldiers so that yeah. they had, like, scarves and socks and sweaters and things like that when the weather got cold. Like, I think the Red Cross, maybe it was, um, you know, really had these, like, knitting campaigns. So it would make uh-huh. it, I mean, like, I don't think a soldier would really think anything of it. So it would probably be easy to, like, slip in whatever spy information you were trying to get in there. It, it does make me giggle, though, because it would be like, here are some socks to get warm. They do have holes, though, because of the right. trains <laughs> that were going by that day. <laughs> I think this woman is pretty f- famous. Uh, her name is Elizabeth Bentley. And she was also known as the Red Spy Queen. And I, it, to me, when I was sort of researching her story, it seems like a little bit of a complicated story. I, mm-hmm. So I think she had some like, there was some shifts and some changes. She worked with the FBI um, and was a, a spy for the Soviet Union. Like she kind of got suspected of like disloyalty. So she met with it. What it says is she met with dozens of highly placed American agents who worked for the Soviets, gathering their secrets and stuffing sensitive documents into her knitting bag. You got to have your project bags, right? More for (laughs) your your yarn and your patterns. You can get sensitive documents in there too. Um, But her Soviet spy masters suspected her of disloyalty. And then they began plotting to harm her. Oh, no. And so to save her own life, she decided to betray her friends and comrades at the FBI. And her defection effectively shut down Soviet espionage in the United States for years. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, right. So there's like a, a twisted story there of like, yeah. I think she was worried about her own life and she betrayed people. And so at one point in time, I think she was working for the US. And then at one point in time, she ended up betraying the U.S. and working for the Soviets, all the while hiding all kinds of sensitive documents in her project bag. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, if TikTok were to be a thing then and, like, somebody, like, approached her on the street and was like, what's, what's in your bag? bag? Can you imagine? She's like, um, this is a pattern that I haven't released yet. I'm a designer and I cannot show you. <laughs> These are highly sensitive knitting patterns that only the Soviets can see. I, you know, yeah. Like it's again, it's it's really stuff for movies. Like that, I find it very mm-hmm. interesting. There was there was a biography written about her, and still available. Like you can still buy it on Amazon. So it's not oh. you know, it's not anything that's not being published anymore. You no, know, and what they say too is not only. Um, were people non-suspecting of really knitters, but also kind of non-suspecting of women. And that's what it made it so easy for them to kind of get away with this, if you will, mm-hmm. because people were not suspecting a, a knitting woman to be carrying, you know, sensitive documents. Yeah. So I think that that's kind of interesting. And the same thing with um, Molly Rinker, you know, nobody, yeah. she, they just, she was going outside to like knit her socks and here she is, you know, trading secrets to George Washington and his army. So. I mean, I think the moral of the story is don't, there are two morals here. Three, don't mess with women. Yes. Don't mess with knitters. Yes. Don't mess with women who knit. <laughs> Right. <laughs> or anyone who knits. Let's just yes. humans who knit. Don't mess yes. with us, okay? Yeah, never oh, know what goodness. we've got in our project bags. Phyllis Pippa Latour. She was born April 8th, 1921. She was born in South Africa and she was a former agent of the United Kingdom's Special Operations Executive Organization. That was a lot. Special Operations yeah. Executive organization, yeah. <laughs> During World War II in France. So she's still alive. 
Yes. She's 102. Wow. <sighs> yeah. I and mean, talk about stories. Okay. So she first joined the Women's Auxiliary Air Force at the age of 20 in 1941 to work as a flight mechanic. But SOE, which is the um, Special Operations Executive Organization <laughs> recruiters, spotted her potential and offered her a job as a spy. So in training, she learned um, encryption and surveillance, but also describes how they were taught by a quote unquote cat burglar who had recently been released from jail, how oh. to get in a high window and down drain pipes and how to oh. climb over roofs without being caught. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. You know, I, you got to do what you got to do. Not only can you knit, but you can scale roofs, I guess. I you know. know. <laughs> So many talents here. So many talents, Phyllis. May 1st, 1944, she jumped out of a U.S. Air Force bomber and landed behind enemy lines and Nazi occupied, which I don't know. We we don't need to say that word here. What do they usually say on TikTok? Sh sh schmotzy? Usually that's the... <laughs> <laughs> like, you know how, how like sometimes the algorithm will like not show something if they think it's yep. a negative. And yep. even if people are talking about, um, you know, things in a way of like education or getting against hate or something, they'll say like schmatzy. Schmatzy yep. occupied Normandy. <laughs> she posed as a teenage French girl and would ride her bike to get around, often under the guise of selling soap. Yeah, there you have it. Yeah. Maybe like handmade soap, right? right. That's how she would pass on the info to the British on the the schmatzy positioning. <laughs> so obviously this was risky for many reasons. Yes, um, yes. But the men who had been sent there before her to act as spies for the, the same reason that she was sent there, um, they had been caught and then they were unalived. So no. this was like, yeah, this was like, we, nobody was messing around here. She was, right. he was dropped in and, and this is why I am not a spy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nope. This is why there's only knitting patterns in my project bag. Yeah. She said, I always carried knitting because my codes were on a piece of silk. I had about 2000 I could use. When I used a code, I would just pinprick it to indicate it had gone I wrapped the piece of silk around a knitting needle and put it in a flat shoelace, which I used to tie my hair up. So she did almost get caught a few times, and she recalled one of those times. I can remember being taken to the station, and a female soldier made us take our clothes off and see if we were hiding anything. She was looking suspiciously at my hair, so I just pulled my lace off and shook my head. That seemed to satisfy her. I tied my hair back up with the lace. It was a nerve-wracking moment. <laughs> That's putting it lightly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what was, I mean, obviously this woman is like so interesting in the fact that she's still alive. The fact that she was able to do this and not get caught and like people had already been caught doing it in the same location, all of that. But her children had no idea about this yes. until they read yes. about it in the year 2000 on the internet. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You're like, mom, mom? That's you? I should have d done a little bit more research about like what she did between those two times. I feel like I couldn't find anything with what I was looking at. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Like my mom was an elementary school teacher. And what if like as a young, young lady, she was also a spy? Mom, were right. you a spy? Right. I know you watch these. <laughs> I know you listen. Were you a spy? But and right. then they'd be like on the internet, like what did, did they Google their last name? Like how did they find it? I, I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I cannot imagine like Elizabeth Bentley, like they wrote a book about her. So can you just imagine like you're like going to the library one day and you're flipping through a book and you're like, wait a second, that looks like my mother. Like I, I can't. <laughs> imagine right and then like do you what do you like after you're done being a spy do you just go back to your regular life like and it's like no big deal like you just go back to whatever you were yeah. being an innkeeper like molly rinker like you just go back to serving drinks and you know making sure people have somewhere to stay like obviously somebody found out about molly or like somebody like passed the story or it was written somewhere but like i would assume that you know, like I said, like a bunch of these people were just went back to their normal life because even if like the war is over or whatever, 
I feel like they could still be in danger, maybe, possibly. Right. Right. Yeah. And here's what I think we need now is like a knitting spy museum. Because the other question is, does she still have like those pieces of late or uh, ribbon that she tied in her hair or the woman that was like knitting the train schedule? Like, did she save those? Did Molly Rinker save the socks that she was supposedly knitting while she's dropping balls of yarn? I would love to see all of that. I know, right? Like, have the moths gotten to it? Probably by now. It's probably, uh, it's probably gone. He's a project bag. I'd love to see what that project bag looked like. No, just a few other things that I that I read when I was doing this research. I found these in an article on Modern Daily Knitting. The article is by Carol J. Solkowski and um, women prisoners at, at the World War II Camp Ravensbrook were forced to knit socks for their captors. A horrible like, yes, that's just very sad. And, you know, but they would purposefully make the heels narrower so their captors would get blisters. At a certain point, London authorities became so concerned with knitting espionage that packages containing knitted items required special handling, given that enemy agents used hand-knitted garments to convey vital military and naval intelligence by means of cunningly worked codes knitted into the material during the last war. (laughs) So interesting. And we talk about it, it makes complete sense and very unsuspecting. But I guess maybe it wasn't since they were, your knitted goods were getting searched at one point in time. I know, right? At a certain point, it was not unsuspecting. And, you know, yeah. I think it's also one of those things where people, knitting has always been political or, yeah. you know, making, crafting. Like people always like to say, you know, it's not, or can we keep, you know, whatever out of it? No, you can't because it's always been. There's always been something to it. So, yep, I agree. Then you think about it and I'm like, you know, if it, if it wasn't for people getting involved and being quote unquote political, like maybe America wouldn't be here. Maybe if Molly Rinker hadn't have passed those notes to George Washington, we'd still be under British rule. I mean, like you just, there's like a whole like thing, can of worms or whatever you want to say, but for people that want to like, it's never been out of making like it's always been part of making's history to have Mm -hmm. these things going on and happening so it's not like can we just stick to knitting no because we never have like it that the the whole point is we never have just stuck to knitting and when we did just stick to knitting we were sending messages through our project bags and our you know our balls of yarn so you know i i think that's always some something to think about and that's also why like knowing history is important right because then you you're not making statements like that that aren't accurate because no knitting has always been political if you will the the women that we're talking about i mean they really risk their lives through their craft to like advance agendas whatever agenda that may be right so i mean that's like pretty serious business you know Mm -hmm. you could lose your life that way so this this isn't like just some you know like it's not fluff it's like some serious stuff going on so Mm -hmm. yeah Love it, Marina. I know. Good conversation. It's great. It's great. How about we jump into talking about what we're working on? What are you working on, Marina? I need to know. Is it? Yes. Hold on. Is it a shawl? It is not a shawl. I end up in like these like things of where like I'll be, I'll make like seven or eight shawls and then I'm like, oh, I'm shawled out. And then I'm like on to something else. Um, And so I am making the Fireside Cardigan and I can't tell you who it's by because her name is not on the pattern. I love cardigans. I'm not sure I'm going to have enough yarn for the sleeves. So it might end up being cap sleeve because I don't want to go out and buy some more yarn, but we'll, and I hate sleeve. I hate making sleeves, but it's just like this beautiful, like white cream color. The yarn is very soft and fluffy. And I think I'll have it done just in time for like, you know, fall weather. But I've always, I always like cardigans. I like something I can just kind of like put on and take off real quick and it keeps me warm. So Lisa Clark, Lisa Clark, Lisa Clark, we got you. Oh, I found it just right. That was the, I clicked on it right when you said that. Look at that timing. And what I, what I like is she did a short sleeve version and a long sleeve version. So I nice. think mine's going to end up being short sleeved because I'm going to run out of yarn. <laughs> All right. So what are you making? Because I saw your post where you're like floating down the river making something. 
<laughs> okay. So I do want to say, if you ever want to go on a lake or a river or in a pool, uh, in a floaty, and you'd like to knit as well, an airtight food container. My knitting did not get wet. It was like perfect. It like sat next to me in the container. And, you know, there were times where like people getting in and out of the floats, like, you know, water would splash, but it was in its container. So it stayed dry. Nice. Okay. There you have it. It worked. So I am almost done with the mini mock neck tank by Jesse May Designs. I love the color. Oh, that's going to come out so cute. I got a certain amount of the way in. And then I realized that it called for holding two yarns together. And I did not do that. So we oh, just had yeah. a little knitting prayer to the knitting goddess. And um, I tried it on. It looks great. I got this at Flock Fiber Festival. And it's Junie and Sai. It's called One Hit Wonder. And um, it's just such a good color. And I'm done with the ribbing on the bottom. I need to do the bind off. And then oh. I need to pick up and knit the collar. Oh, the collar. The neck? Gotcha. I, don't, I don't know. It's not. It's like not a collar. It's like a, it's the neck. The neck. Okay. Ribbed like the band -aid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my goal is to get it done before this weekend because we're supposed to have one day that might be a little bit in more on the like fall weather side. And I'm going to okay. a music festival with my friend Stacia called Bumbershoot. I feel like the other thing that we need to talk about, Marina, is what have you been watching? Because this is a fun topic for us every time we chat. What are you watching yes. while you're cre while you're crafting? What I realized is, is that there's a lot of shows that are like coming out um, like next week. So, and I'm hoping they kind of stay that way. Cause I know that there's like writer strikes and like a whole bunch of other stuff going on. And mm -hmm. so I, I like f in full support of those, but I also yes. like my shows. So <laughs> I know I've thought about that too. And it's like, yes, I support the strike. They just need to be paid more. Like how are these, I don't know, but it's the system, right? Right. It's right. Just, you got to pay a living wage. But for companies that make a ton of money, like I, I just want to live. Like I'm not trying to like buy a yacht. I'm just trying to keep my lights on. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But anyways, I started watching, um, I rewatched Virgin River um, on Netflix. And so I got into that and then like binge watched like the entire, I think it's five seasons. And so I feel kind of sad. Like I love watching shows like that and you get like really attached to the characters and then you have like this pause. And so I'm like, oh, so I've got, only got a week to wait because I think the new season comes out next week. And I'm so I'm excited about that. <laughs> and then I was all into I watched um, Outlander, which comes on stars. And I had watched that. And my God, if you want to talk about knitting, there is some fabulous knitting and they do um, wool walking, which I think is. I might get it wrong, but it might be Irish um, where, and they use like, I think they use like goat urine or something to like set the colors and like the women like sit around a table and like move the yarn and like sing. And they do all of this in Outlander. So if you ever really want like a, you're a diehard knitter, like they, okay. they make some, like their costumes, a lot of them look hand knitted. They're like beautiful, but then they also really like tie in, um, uh, wool walking, which I think is something I've I, like, I've always been like fascinated by. Um, but anyway, so I started, I, I just finished Outlander and then they have the new season, but now, you know, these streaming services are, have gotten crafty. And so now instead of releasing the entire season, number one, all at once on the same day, they're doing it week by week. So I watched Outlander week by week. And then a few weeks ago it stopped and it was like, oh, we'll see you again. Like, this is like the fall finale. And I'm like, what do you mean the fall finale? Like, I, I don't want to wait until like February or March of next oh year. My gosh, so that's too long. I've got a, it's like a long time. So now I have to wait. But in the meantime, I think I might, there's Outlander knitting patterns like all over the place. So I think I might, that might be like my next, my next project because I'm kind of missing the characters um, from the show. And they, there's also the book. So I've been like reading some of the books. The books are really, really long. So, and I, I'm not, I can't knit and read at the same time. Like some people can do, I'm not, that's That not blows my, my mind. That blows yes. my mind when people can do that. Yes. Like I just can't, like I'm not coordinated enough to like scan the page and, and knit at the same time. So, but mm -hmm. I have outlander things to tide me over until 
they bring it back in the winter or whenever it's coming back. So those mm-hmm. have been my two shows. What about you? I've also heard that Outlander is nice if you like looking at attractive people. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, it, you know, it is there are some there are some parts in it that are not for the faint of heart, not for kids. It can be it, it can be very graphic, and the nice the nice thing is because I've I've watched it before and rewatching it, I fast forward through all the like bloody like ba- like parts that I like don't really want to see, but I like the story, so I fast forward through those, and then I like get back to the like knitting and the you know, and it's amazing. Like I I it's a really for me I I really like the story. The um, TV show has a lot of texture to it. So like they really did, I think, a nice job with like the landscapes and the sets. And there's a ton of knitting in it. Just beautiful, just beautiful knitting. And the story I really I've always enjoyed stories about time travel. So I enjoy the story. Um, And definitely the characters are not bad to look at. for sure. (laughs) I love it. You see a lot of them. Like you see a lot of, of like the character. So you can't complain about that either. So yeah, you were like, there are parts that are not for children. And I was like, what parts Marina? (laughs) (laughs) Mm. You'll have to watch it to find out. I know. (laughs) Um, Okay. And also, Virgin River. I feel like Virgin River is Netflix's like not nod to like the Hallmark Channel shows, but they're not Christmas. You know what I mean? It's like they took that concept, but like made it a show. And I love it. That that has knitting in it too. They have like their knitting circle. Yes, they do. They do. And that's how they like get together and socialize. So I think maybe I get drawn to the like little bits of knitting in these shows that uh, I don't even notice. So okay, so if you are um, watching on YouTube, comment with your favorite show that has knitting in it. That's what I want to know. I want to know what your favorite TV show that has knitting or movie too. And if you're listening, Send us a note at HQ at makingco.com because I feel like we should or just even crafting in general. Like let's make maybe there's like a list of like crafters movies movies. that we can watch this movies and TV shows we should watch this winter that are have crafting in them. Love it. That's a great idea. So first I started rewatching the morning show, which is on Apple TV because the next season is coming out mid-September. And I feel like that one is one where I think I watched all of season two, but I'm not sure. And it's not because it's bad or boring. I think it was just so long ago (laughs) that I'm like, did I watch it all? Yes. That's a tough one. But um, all of the actors are just so good in it. It's like very tough subject matter. Um. You know, again, the patriarchy and and um, basically like I feel like it's like mimicking like the Matt Lauer story kind of in a way, okay. but also okay. like incorporating other things. So, um, you know, sometimes men are trash. This is yes. <laughs> <laughs> hijack on Apple TV. Okay. Speaking of people who are nice to look at, Idris Elba is yeah. star. Yes, indeed. Um, Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll take very good. Very good. And then, of course, my housewives, my real housewives of New York. (laughs) The new, the new guard. Love them. Love them. Uh, Okay. Jenna Lyons. I want to be friends with Jenna Lyons. And (laughs) so, if you're watching Jenna, call me. Let's hang out. (laughs) Hey, again, anybody comment, even if it's not, even if if it doesn't have crafting, just, and if you're enjoying it, comment what you're watching and we can start a list. I feel like that should live somewhere in the making app. (laughs) Always need good shows. Let's end it with a moment of gratitude. Marina, what are you grateful for? You know, I am grateful for this summer. Like I had a really nice summer and it's coming to an end because school is about to start up again. But I just, you know, I, I like having some downtime and I like being able to experience the beach and the warm weather. Uh, I went to Puerto Rico and I loved it. It was very, 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 very hot, but it was just really nice to spend some time with my family. And so it's just been like a really great summer. So Mm -hmm. summer would be what I am grateful for today. 
I know your Puerto Rico trip looked amazing. Yeah, so it was yeah. a beautiful little island. It was just so peaceful and quiet. The people were nice. It was just, it, you know, as my child said, it's like something out of a post, like it looks like a postcard, like it's something out of like a movie set, like, but it's real life. And it just was, it was glorious. Beautiful. I am grateful for um, my animals. I had a little bit of a scare with my kitty Bella last week, who is 21. Um, she had some seizures after 21 years of no seizures. So that was, wow. yeah, like four in a row. It was not, it was very oh, yeah. scary. Yeah. And so um, we rushed to the emergency yeah. vet. What's up? She's okay now. She's okay now. Lead with that. <laughs> Sorry, I should lead with that. She's okay. Yes. She's okay. <laughs> Which is like a miracle, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My 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 friend Val is like, we should be studying her. They put her on anti-seizure medicine and she's been fine. Like she she came okay. home, she went to, to eat, and she immediately jumped up to the counter. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> no jumping. <laughs> hey, you're 21. B, you just had five seizures. C, like you're on this medicine that kind of makes you high. What are you doing? <laughs> She was probably feeling pretty good. Maybe she was feeling like she was 15. <laughs> I mean, she's been also, she jumps up to the counter often. Like, that's just what she does. And still, that's another thing that we're like, how are you still doing this? But um, also thankful for my partner who was like super supportive and really got me through that because I don't know, like I've, I've had Bella for a really, really long time. Yeah. We've been through a lot together. And so it was a lot. It was a lot to yeah. go through. So I'm thankful for my animals and I'm thankful for time with friends. You know, I was able to kind of do a little lake floating this weekend um, because Bella was magically okay. And I got to hang out with Amy last week in Seattle from Lobby and Amy and um, bring her around to different spots. So it was just like, it's like a sandwich where the bread is yeah. good moments and the meat is the scary part where your cat is doing things that you hope that they wouldn't do, <laughs> especially right. at the age of 21. <laughs> right. Right. I'm glad she's okay. And oh, seems yeah. like she's going back to her spry uh, counter jumping self. Well, thank you for coming and talking about knitting and spies and yes, TV shows. You. Everyone, Marina will be back. So stay tuned. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> to join the very first social marketplace app made for makers, crafters, and artists by makers, crafters, and artists, head to themakingapp.com. Download the app and join the amazing multi-craftual community. You won't regret it. Just so much inspiration and so many wonderful, wonderful humans. Did you know that you can also listen to the Making Conversation podcast in the Making app? Open the app, tap on Discover, and scroll down to Podcasts. From there, you'll see all of them listed. We've also started putting um, these up on YouTube if you haven't noticed. Uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. I am, I am a one, one woman show. If you're listening, there's a link down below to the episode on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, there is a link to listen. So choose your own adventure. If you've made it this far and you're interested in sponsoring Making Conversation or having Making at an event to collect content, amazing maker stories, vendor stories, etc., send us a note at hq at makingco.com. We would so very much appreciate it if you were to share the podcast with your crafting community, whether that's online or offline. Um, you know, having more eyes and ears always feels real good. So thanks for watching and or listening, and we'll see you in the making app.